it's just so wonderful to have you with us again. And we're so honored to have our relationship with the Online Learning Consortium. So thank you for being here, Kathleen. Um, so I have really three questions for you to, okay. to respond to today. And the first is um, very interesting from your vantage point mm -hmm. of uh, looking at a range of kinds of institutions and being very aware of what's happening in the field of education. Where do you see the field going? And education, I'm thinking here very broadly, K-12. The second question is going to be around, and I'll come back and prompt you. The okay, second great. one is going to be about what some of the barriers are mm -hmm. to us achieving some new vision. And the third is very germane to our program, and that is what are the leadership skills mm -hmm. that you think people might need. But let, let's start with the first one. Okay. Like, What excites you about where we're going and what the possibilities are in education? You know, I just read a really great um, paper by Clayton Christensen called Higher Education. I don't mm. know if you've read it. It's, no. And it's spelled H-I-R-E. But it really talks oh. about, yeah, kind of cool, cool, right? cool, very but cool. He, but he's really, I mean, really focusing on a lot of things that we've been discussing about prepping our, our, our students to, to be gainfully employed. And so some of the things that excite me right now is that I see institutions perking up and paying attention to that. I see them partnering with, um, corporations and looking at curriculum and trying to design it so that students when they leave are going mm. to be gainfully employed. I like mm. the fact that we've become so much more learner-centered. I think about when I went up through my academic uh, progression and how I was in the back of a classroom and that seemed like distance education mm -hmm. to me. I tend to be more of an introvert and I process a lot, so that real-time environment doesn't work for my learning style, but it was the only one that was available. And now we have so many ways that we can engage students that are not templated for you know that one student that can sit in a lecture hall and listen to everything, whether it's competency-based learning or flipping the classroom or you know doing some kind of self-paced um, type of program or online. I mean, it really is has now come down to that the student is a customer, mm -hmm. and I know that sometimes is foreign to academic vernacular, but I really believe it to be true, mm -hmm. that they are a customer, and we shouldn't treat them as they should be all the same, that mm -hmm. we should look at ways that we can engage them that matches their learning styles as well as what they want to do professionally. So in lots of ways, you're describing a, um, a refocus on the needs of the learner rather than the needs of the institution, which is maybe where we have been in the past. I think you're absolutely right. The needs of the learner, and, and also one thing we need to talk about too is, and I know it's so tired and I hate saying it, but the sage on the stage with the mm. faculty. Sure, sure. But you know, the faculty used to, and at least I felt pressure that I had to know everything. Mm. I would never stand up in front of a classroom and say, I didn't know it. Mm. Now I have no problem saying that because mm. the way that the good institutions are positioning faculty mm. is that we are guiding. We don't need to know everything, mm. but we do need to know how to help the learner get there. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's that's very refreshing. I think it's very empowering because it enables the learner to take um, charge of their own education and, and consequently I think get greater buy-in. How about for faculty members? So you're a faculty member as well. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that an exciting, is that scary? Is it exciting? Uh... Oh, it's a I, shift. Yeah, it is a shift. I, I love it. Mm. I mean, I, I happen to thrive on that. But I also work with a, a unique population, which is an adult population, which I find are so focused and so engaged. And for me, it's, it's, you know, it's almost seamless between work and, and facilitation because facilitation has become very collaborative, very much like my, my work style, how sure. I like to work on the job. Mm. And it's... You know, I feel like I'm partnering with the student versus I'm, I'm directing them to do something. Mm -hmm. we, we become a partner in their, in their education, mm -hmm. and, and I tell them that I'm committed to their success, mm -hmm. that it isn't a gotcha game, that I want them to succeed mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Neat stuff. So you've described sort of this vision in mm -hmm. three to five years of, of where you see us going. What do you think will hold us back or prevent us from achieving that kind of a vision? You know, we talked about it today in, a, in our IELOL program. I think the institutions themselves can be a, a barrier mm -hmm. to success. And I, I say that only because I think the infrastructure is such that it's hard for them mm -hmm. to move at speed. 
I also feel that the reward systems are not necessarily in place to entice not only administrators, but faculty to be, to be engaged. Now, you and I both work with faculty that will go above and beyond, so sure. I'm, I'm generalizing. But I, I think there needs to be a, an incentive structure, an appraisal structure. Mm -hmm. I think the institution needs to figure out how to get, you know, get over itself in many cases. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a big challenge. Oh, very interesting. So um, this last question then does have to do with, with our, uh, our program we're right. involved in. And um, I'm wondering what, what skill sets or competencies you see as being necessary for someone entering the field today. Uh, and, and side question is, are they different from what we had to do 10 years ago, 20 years ago? I think they are, Larry, because mm -hmm. I think, you know, just as our students have to be lifelong learners, I think our faculty has to, that has to be part of their mm -hmm. paradigm too. They, has to, they have to always be eager and inquiring and, and want to know more. They can't be comfortable. And I think, I think faculty did get comfortable maybe 10, 15 years ago, and now they can't be. I mean, they've got to be a little bit on the edge of their seat, anticipating the next change. They have to be technology literate. And I know that's scary for some, but mm. they have to embrace new technology. And if they can't do it on their own, at least find people that can help them engage, because that's those are going to be the learners that they are going to be dealing with yeah. of the future. You know, yeah. Our, yeah. our K through 12 are so uh, technology savvy, much more than my children who are in their 20s, who I thought were digital natives. The people that are coming right. up now are just more so. Right. And right. I think the faculty really, really need to embrace that. The other thing I think, and this is something that I've learned this year in, in my new position, is the whole notion of this isn't a position that you have to go it alone. And I often feel more mm. so for adjunct Good faculty point. than for faculty that are on, on campus, that it is a very solitary environment mm. and you tend not to reach out. And I think we as faculty need to get better at reaching out to our peers, asking for help, looking at mm. what best practices are, seeking out best practices, being a little bit more collaborative um, with other faculty mm. members because that's another way that you can grow and develop. I think Faculty developing a network is kind of for a foreign concept. Developing their own network, a community, of huh? the community, yeah, exactly yeah. A, a learning community that yeah. they can go to and share, and you know, get coaching, um, sure. you know, get constructive feedback. I yeah. think that's very important. And again, as a faculty member, that would be. I I know for some it may be yeah. counter to the way they've come through their process, but here we are. And the opportunity to continue to learn and to grow and, and, and also to contribute to somebody else's growth, it could be kind of exciting. I think it is. And I think, you know, the, motiva the motivated faculty members see that and will be excited by it. I happen to think that right now we live in such an exciting time. Mm -hmm. um, I started my career uh, working on the World Wide Web when that was just coming into fruition. And I often say that this is very similar to that time when it was kind of a wild west and sure. you know we're still we're still very much pioneers in this field and we're still kind of blazing the trail with with everything that's happening and I, I think it's an exciting time yeah. for faculty. Very good. Well, we appreciate your leadership by the way in in helping us get there and we appreciate OLC and we wish you the very best. So thank you. Thank you very Thanks, much Larry. for being with us. My pleasure.